what's going on, family? Uh, we're on our way to my dad's house. We got this idea where, you know, maybe we should do a series of, uh, of videos with some of the older generations just to get an idea of uh, what it was like coming here, what it was like for them to uh, uh, find jobs, to grow up, maybe memories that they have. Not only that, but that the importance of, uh, of getting together as a family. I think that's that's something that we miss sometimes. I mean, we all know that it's important, but to uh, really hear it so that so that we have a connection to to our past. And I think that's important. So I have uh, Tony Melendez here with me, uh, the one with no hair, and uh, we're gonna get it done, right, Tony? Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember when, when we were kids and we were able to have the, uh, the pig roast at my dad's house and that was always so much fun. And I want my kids to be able to experience that kind of stuff, but you know, the family just doesn't get together anymore like we used to. I do miss that. Huh? I do miss those days. Don't you miss that? I miss those days. And uh, I think that, I think that all of our kids need that. I think sometimes... People need a, they need a connection. They need to see the bigger picture of what the family truly is. So, I think that's the point of today. What do you think, Tony? I think that's exactly the point. That's exactly the point, right? Exactly. Family reunions are, uh, family get-togethers are very important. Very important. Reminds us of where we come from, who we are as a family, um, how much we need to just, you know, love and be there for one another. All it is, we got a train. We got a train, so I guess we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Train. Yeah, so remember when we had the uh, the bonfires over at Friends Creek Road when we lived over there? We had the bonfires and we had music and and uh, they would sing when the deacon went down and Angel Gonzalez, would, that would be the happiest day in his life, singing the deacon went down. I remember my brother Louis, uh, he had uh, Mikey and Danny Melendez, the twins, believing that there was a ghost downstairs in our basement named Seymour. <laughs> it was so hilarious. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Oh my god. But hey, that's what family does. That's what we do. <laughs> that's, what, that's what makes us the best family. Yeah. You know. And then, remember that one year we had the hayride? Oh, we I love that hayride. hayride. We had that big yard, and the, all that area, and we cut out the path. And that was for Halloween, wasn't it? Huh? Was that, that for was Halloween? The Halloween parties we had. Now, that was before Tony Melendez's house, the one with the hair. Before his Halloween parties. We were having Halloween parties at our house. I think it was before. I don't know. It might have been going on at the same time. Who knows? Anyway, we had the, uh, uh, the haunted path. Remember the haunted Ooh. path? That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. And Louie was, uh, I think Uncle Louie was a werewolf. And uh, I dressed up as the unknown comic from the Garnet Show. <laughs> of course, Eddie, of course. Yeah. Oh, God, that was some good stuff. The bonfires were probably my best memories. The bonfires, the games at, uh, at French Creek, you know, the football right. games or the baseball game, playing basketball. On the court there. Yeah, playing basketball on the court. And the football games. We had crazy football games. No doubt. And Hector would come over and punt that ball a freaking <laughs> mile long. Oh, that you could kick. And, uh, and Chris was there, Chris Gonzalez. My brother Chris was an excellent receiver. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, those were good times. Good times. So, anyway, when we get to my mom's house, um, Titi Judy and uh, Sharon should be there, and Sharon's husband, uh, uh, God, Jose Marie, and uh, my mom and pop, of course. And uh, we, what we want to do is we want to sit down. Uh, look at that big windshield. My windows are getting all fogged up. We just want to sit down and be able to talk to them about this kind of stuff. You know, what what was it like? What was it? What do they remember? What was the fun times for them? I know my dad could tell you a bunch of stories. 
I think Judy's got a lot of them too. So when we get there, we'll we'll be back on. All right. How's that sound? Sounds awesome. All right, let's do Looking it. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll get there in just a minute. All right. All right, All right here we are at Mom and Pop's house. And uh, come on in here. I don't see anybody else here yet. Yay! The I arrival. I love coming here. Yeah, they got my mom got some good stuff. Mm -hmm. So are you ready? Let's come on inside Pop and Mom's house. This is a uh, where they are. Casa de los abuelos. Hey, Pop! What's happening, son? What's going on? Hey, yeah, Tony here. He's videoing. Hi, Tony. Come on in. Welcome to the Ponderosa. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite place to be. <laughs> Come on in. Come on. There she is. I thought I heard yeah, you. Yeah, she's cooking. I thought I heard your voice. Mm. That smells Tony. good in here. Does it really? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, everybody. What do we have here? Oh, rice and beans, and we're gonna have pork loin and salad. Mm -hmm. I'm still debating on whether to have a vegetable. Uh, here we have uh, my Titi and the beautiful uh, Judy Maldonado and uh, her daughter, of course, Sharon. Uh, Gonzalez, and um, it's so happy that uh, I didn't expect to do an interview with them today. But I heard yesterday that you guys were in town and that you were coming, so it was for us to be here. And, I, and we were talking earlier about um, some of the things that. Um, let me turn my phone off. Could it go off? I was just wondering what what were the types of things. Um, that you remember from Puerto Rico when 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 you guys were ready to come over and and when you got here, what were your thoughts? Um, well, from Puerto Rico, I remember in the evenings after we had dinner, we would play in front of the house. The neighbor children would come and we would play hide and seek and we would play blind man's play. We would play there in front of the house and mom would always have a chair or something and she'd be sitting there watching us and. It was very innocent and it was very good. I remember our mommy was a vocational teacher and she had students, they were all handicapped. They were missing a leg, missing fingers, um, arms, D different kinds of uh, handicaps. And I remember, I remember the ladies, and although they were handicapped, they did everything they could to learn, to learn how to sew and to progress. And they were very, very nice ladies. And then the day before we came to Puerto Rico, Carmen and my sister and I, we got this um, pencil. It was it was uh, one of Giocalo's pencils because it's a carpenter's pencil. And we wrote our names all over the bottom of the house, in the basement, all over the columns, so that if we ever went back, we would find the house. We would look for the house, and that was a way for us to identify the house. Now the house you're talking about, that was the one that... That was the last house we lived in. It was the one that Yocano and Mami made. Right, they built it brick by brick. Yes. And then, and then as soon as they got it done, they had to come here. We came. <laughs> yes, yes. What was it like when, when you got here and, and uh, you know, Grandpa was in Puerto Rico, or Grandpa was in Puerto Rico? No, he, was he was working here. at the mill, uh -huh. and um, your first impression of coming here, was it cold, was it warm? It was very cold. It was very, very cold. cold. We came to live with Titi Vidi. Um, it was very cold. And then we, we bought a house on 34th Court, and we lived there. And I remember mommy crying because she wanted to go back to Puerto Rico. Really? I remember her crying. And then Pop worked at, uh, at the 
steel mill. Mm -hmm. And then at the house where we lived, it was a furnace, it was a coal furnace, and at night she had to go down to put coal into the furnace. And she was afraid of the basement. You know? So she would wake me up and I would go down to the basement with her and I would sit on the steps while she was putting the coal in the in the basement. And all the time that she was doing this, she cried. Um, the, mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, but the we still had we had a lot of family coming over, didn't we, at that time? And, yeah, and, and then, well, but slowly uh, everybody started coming, and she got over it. <laughs> what was it like when when the family started coming, and you were able to get together and mm -hmm. and participate in in family functions and stuff like that? I mean, was it easier then to? Oh yeah, uh, the first ones that came over were the crew and Titi and then we came, and then Titi Julita came, and um, Sammy, uh -huh. and Sammy was the highlight. Sammy made everything happy, and he made everything perfect. In the summertime, we always had a picnic at his house. There was always something special, and um, I don't know how you would say a palo en cebao in English. A grease pole. Yeah, yeah, a grease pole. He grease would, pole. He would oh, make a pole. And you put the bottle on and top. He would put the rum <laughs> up there. I heard about this story. Yes, yes. they yeah. had so much fun, and and he would <laughs> he would make the pork, you know. Didn't somebody uh, get to the top and actually get the bottle? And Louis Cruz. Louis Cruz, and yeah. he got the bottle, and it was water. Or <laughs> was that the was that the story? I don't re I don't remember very well, I but we could that. always manage to get up there and get the rum. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was it was very special, you know. And the fact that the family was together. And all through all these years, all through all these years, you know, we come and we go, but the family has stayed together. You know. Mm -hmm. We we're always together. We're always special. And I think we're a special family. To me. To me. Because no matter where we are, we're we're special. Mm -hmm. And what if you had to give advice to, to somebody, like one of the youth, let's say you're like 11 or 12, what would that advice be? Growing up and, and living, mm -hmm. living in the rain, living as, as a Latino here, what do you think that would be? Well, I think it's a challenge. It's not as big a challenge as it used to be, but I think that they should accept that challenge and they should carry it on and they should try to, you know, study which is the base of everything because mm -hmm. if you don't study you don't get anywhere so if you study and you try to get ahead and and you hold on to your family values you hold on to your catholic or whichever religion you have you just hold on to your religion you'll make it you'll make it mm -hmm. i think it's um it has to be that way it has to be that way mm -hmm. and Sharon, you, I remember the first time, we were talking about this earlier, I remember the first time you came from Puerto Rico, she came to the house in Fresh Creek, my, she came to my, well she came to grandpa's house, and then my dad picked her up and brought her to our house, and my brother and I were playing basketball, and she wanted to play, so we were very nice, and I'm let her play, nice. we were very nice and let her play, <laughs> and she was a ball hog, <laughs> and totally made me upset, because she would not share the ball. That is not true. That is true. Uh, all boys, and I was just one girl. And uh, that's the part I remember. I think your father then decided you were punished for a month for mistreating me. <laughs> that's what I, my memory is for being I don't girl. remember that. And a bad cousin, yeah, I think that's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what, what were your thoughts when you first came here to the, from I Puerto Rico? Do you remember? I've seen pictures of me coming as a little girl, and I, I don't remember the first time I actually came with mom. I remember maybe the second time we came around. The things that I remember, it was having a big family. And for us, um, going, being in Puerto Rico and being part of um, the family here in Lorraine, for us it was, it was like we knew everybody. Mom made, mom made sure that we all knew who everybody was, so there were no strangers. You know, I knew who all of my cousins were because she showed us pictures. Mm -hmm. Because your father and your mom will send us um, with uh, things for Easter. Oh, and, yeah. and those things were really big back home about candy, especially candy. And like little chickens and bunnies and all that kind of stuff. Like we had the best chocolate 
in uh, Easter, and um, it was it was very special. Every time we got a box, it was like full of pictures and candy, and mom just made it important for us to realize the family. We were, we belonged to a bigger family that wasn't there. So coming here, it was just being able to play with people we already knew. And Ma and Grandma came all the time to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when when we actually came, up, we were familiar with your faces and stuff like that when we, we actually came. But I remember playing with cousins. I remember being at Grandma's house in front of the house. Um, and everybody was there, like you and all your brothers. And Hector, he was the Incredible Hulk. I <laughs> And I was like scared of him that I wanted to play. Yeah. And we were like there, okay, Hector is coming, everybody get together. And we will all try to run. Do you remember running and um, and him being able to carry everybody at the same time? Mm -hmm. And I remember that and him trying to play, teach us football. I remember doing that. I remember going to your house. Uh, it was like a whole different experience going to your house because it was always pretty. I, was, I remember that it was like the house that you see in the movies. I remember mm -hmm. the blue house, everything yeah. was perfect. <laughs> and then I remember um, uh, Theo, Truman used to put us like on a um, hill. I remember it was a, a tractor with a, a tractor. The tractor with a trailer <laughs> and drive you around the yard exactly. and stuff like that, yeah. Stuff like that. And then we'll be at the basement and we will have tacos. Because <laughs> <laughs> the best tacos ever. She's like, the best tacos. Yeah. And I remember, I remember those things. I remember going to the lake. I remember being there with Matthew. Mm -hmm. and, and Titi Rosie and Jesse and all them, I remember doing st stuff like that. I also remember going to um, the summer camp at um, Secret Heart. Secret Heart summer camp. Yeah, they came a couple times. Really? You came to that? Yeah. Yeah. For real? Mm -hmm. So we, we had... My daughter's part of the summer camp now. Really? Yeah. I, I think to me it was one of the best experiences. So that was to me, it was... You guys were there, were here in Ohio and we were in Puerto Rico, but to us it's like we belong to a bigger family. So, and then when I came to study in Oklahoma, the first Thanksgiving I had a king, I drove to come see Grandma. Mm -hmm. But Grandma used to record everything, so she would come to Puerto Rico and show us videos on all of you guys, everything you guys were doing. Yeah, all the time. we have some of those videos here. Really? Yeah. So um, what now? You were Miss Team Puerto Rico. I don't know if yeah, I don't know if the family knows that. I'm sure a lot of us do, but you and Miss Team, you want to talk, say something about that? What your memories were about that? Yeah, my father bought the pageant. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I was. Because you said you were saying something like, you, they told you that you weren't Puerto Rican enough. Well, it was first. I guess nobody else in my town. I don't even know how I got there, but um, when I went over, I was Miss Teen Ibolito, then Miss Teen Puerto Rico, and then we went to the competition in Florida, where well, the pageant was in Florida, and um, and and people reacted. There was, I mean, I would, I'd, I'd been in Florida before, but there were people from all over um, the states, and that that was that the girl was from uh, was my the, one, the girl who won. Do you remember which, what was the state? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. And uh, and they, they had talked about it and they were like surprised that you know that I was so white and I had blue eyes and and they had asked you know there's any Puerto Ricans that look like you and to me it was like surprised that to me it was like nobody ever talked about that before but then when I went to school in Oklahoma with Scott because of the pageant I got a scholarship to go to Oklahoma City University once I was there the shock to me I remember calling my mom from a payphone. Because they gave me this paper and they asked me, uh, what is the color, uh, what was the question? It was like, what are you, um, black, white, Indian? It was a like black, white, Indian, or oriental, something like that. Was, I had to call my mom over the phone and I said, what am I? Nobody ever asked me that. It's like, am I white, am I black? Never, no, I never thought about that. It was never a question brought to me in Puerto Rico. I never Puerto thought Rico, of people. I'm sorry, but in Puerto Rico, you never talk about your skin color. They accept you as you are. It doesn't matter if you're black or white or whatever color you are. You're you. You know, you're not white or black or any of that stuff. 
and you don't have to fill it out. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that, so I have to go to the payphone and call my mom. Fall in love. <laughs> That's amazing. And say, mom, they're asking me, am I black? Am I what? I know I was an Indian because I was there, and I saw people that you know may say, well, maybe I'm Indian, you know, because I remember in the Puerto Rican days, like, there Dino, were Indians. I'm Taino. I said maybe, but then I looked and I said, no, mom, I don't think I'm the Tainos. I mean, that's not the Indians they're talking about. And my mom was, and the, my mom will tell me, is there a place where it says other? No, she says right other. My mom was like really mad on the phone. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, mad, huh? yeah, I got mad. It's funny because like like when I fill out an application for for something or other, there's a couple times I had to put white. Yeah, because you don't have a choice. Because I don't have a choice. Uh -huh. I don't have a choice. I'm not black. I'm not this. I'm not that. Uh -huh. You know. And our color comes from uh, like like the blonde hair and blue eyes that come because Grandma's family's from Catalan um, in Spain, right? Not, yeah. And grandma's father, what was his name? Uh, Quintin. Quintin Dueño. Quintin uh -huh. Dueño. They were both from Spain. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, actually, it was from Portugal, according mm -hmm. to TDVD. Uh -huh. <laughs> TDVD says that they were from Portugal. And, uh, and they, were, they were both blonde and white. <laughs> okay, so in Puerto Rico, you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. What kind of advice would you give to those who are seeking for a profession or seeking for... Um, thinking about education coming up, what, what would you say to them? I think that you, I, I learned that from my husband, my husband says, um, he's a vet, and he says you have to get up every day doing something that you really love, because you, you're going to need that every day, you know, as an energy to do really, to do things that, you, that really make you happy, and you have to think about not only a, a job or a career that you can make money, but it can also make you feel like you're doing something for others. And I think it is very hard right now, but what I have seen, there's more, there's many jobs that people don't know that are out there that you don't actually need to have, you know, a doctor's degree to really do things that can make a difference or it can be fulfilling jobs. And I think things are changing right now. Like, like for example, in Puerto Rico, we said we have more lawyers than we need. But there's like special social workers, for example, that are work specialized in kids with special needs and stuff like that. And I think there's space for stuff like that. I think it, kids have to start going, I think their parents also helping them in their school, looking outside of their regular doctor, lawyer, architect. There's many jobs that are there that are paying more money. A lot of them are paying more money than being a lawyer or a doctor. And, and, and are needed right now, and, you know, because things are changing. And, um, and I think that I would, if I could go back, I will try to be exposed to more things when you're in high school and to participate. Like if you think you want to be a lawyer, but go to the lawyer's office. If you want to work in agriculture, you'll try to do that, those things. Uh, my sister-in-law is a um, uh, director at a school, a Montessori school, and a special program in Puerto Rico. And she does that since the kids are in ninth grade. She takes them to different things. You want to be a mechanic, she contacts a mechanic, and you're there for a couple of weeks, and then you decide you hate it. Uh -huh. You know, and you do stuff like that. So I think it's a matter of being exposed and being out there. And, um, and, and, and I think that it is so sad because I see it in my practice that families are so busy doing so many things that they forget about spending time together. And even though our growing up was difficult, you know, mom was alone in Puerto Rico, her family, you know, she, brothers, her sister, nobody was there. Everybody was here. Everybody yeah. was here. But she made sure that, you know, my, my brothers, and we realized that being together, being a family, it is important. And I think that has gotten us this far. Because when things go wrong, your family is always there. And I think even when you were a teenager, you think, okay, my dad is not the perfect dad, or my mom is not the perfect mom. It doesn't matter. It's, it's like, okay, well, look, try to, to bring your parents into your activities and your brothers and your sister. Because I think that's, from my perspective on my family, that's what's making the difference. When hard times come, family is always there for you. You never go away. Right? Yep. That's what I say, man. I tell my kids that all the time. Yeah. I think they go... <laughs> my mom used to tell me that I can still see her. Oh yeah. See, sitting down, she used to tell her, "See, our family is always there. It doesn't matter what happens." And and she says, "And you know, and I remember being in Oklahoma and being alone. 
In the middle of nowhere? No, no, I didn't, I didn't realize how in the middle of nowhere I was. I figured out that later. As a lawyer, I think I have to some kind of um, something to do with my parents and the way there. I don't know if I still can present a case against them. You know, I always felt that my family was a word from Colorway. I could just pick up the phone and they were there. Right there. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right there. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. See? See that he's lying that he loves me? <laughs> all away from him. All right, so this is the first of the video. This is the first video of a series we're going to be doing. Uh, uh, the family. Uh, we're going to do this uh, approaching the family reunion. I hope you guys all enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you guys at the family reunion. Bye bye. Salud. <laughs>